Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Kais G301 heated motorcycle gloves. Most people go for heated gloves like this because they want the most warmth that's available, but not all heated gloves are equal, and these are designed to keep you warmer than other Kais gloves. From my experience, they don't pump out any more heat necessarily than the other Kais gloves, but they are designed to retain more of that heat once it's been generated. The most obvious way they do that is this unconventional arrangement for the fingers where the four fingers are grouped together in two pairs. The principle is that each finger is exposed to less cold airflow across the surface of the glove, helping retain more heat on the inside of the gloves. A good friend of mine who loves a cliche would say these gloves are in the Marmite collection and he's right, some people will love the idea of having warm fingers so much that they're fine with having them clustered together like this, but then other people will probably hate the idea so much that they'd rather suffer frostbite than wear gloves like this. So the idea of having gloves with grouped fingers like this aren't actually new. Hein Gericke must have sold thousands of pairs of their old Pathans. Rucker did one for Yonks before the CE regulations got in the way, and you can still get gloves like this from brands like Risha. This is actually the first time I've worn a pair of gloves with linked fingers, and when I was riding, it was never an issue having the fingers joined up. But then I always use four fingers on the clutch lever and two on the front brake, so I didn't actually notice any difference. But if you're someone who likes to cover each lever with one finger all the time, then you'd probably have to learn to get over that when wearing gloves like this. The bit that I did find more noticeable was a reduction in dexterity when I wasn't on the bike. Getting a jacket sleeve over a glove cuff can be tricky when you're wearing winter gloves and have all four of your fingers able to function independently. So you can probably imagine how it feels to do that with a hand that looks a bit like Dr. Spock's. With these gloves, that was especially the case when powering the gloves from the batteries that you can buy separately and tuck into this pocket on the cuff. That makes the cuff quite bulky, so it's harder to get your jacket over the top. But I always got there in the end. The other aspect, away from the finger linking that sets these gloves apart, is the thermal lining. It's 3M Thinsulate, so it's a known and trusted brand, but it's a heavier liner than other Kais gloves, which offers the most insulation to stop that heat escaping. I reckon the combination of a thicker lining and that grouping of fingers works well at making these gloves really nice and warm. So I'll try and run quickly through the details you need on the gloves construction. The backs of the hands are made from nylon that's been treated to repel water and there's piping across the knuckle that lights up in a car headlight beam. The switch is to power them up and set the heat level or on the back of the hand just here and that means you can wear the cuff under your jacket and still get to the buttons which is actually handy. There's no knuckle armour but then I've never seen a pair of gloves with both linked fingers and knuckle armour so that's not extraordinary. Plugs for the power connections live at the top of the cuff which means they're protected against rain when you wear them under your jacket sleeve. There's a layer of genuine leather that runs around the sides and tops of the fingers and then it's also at the tip of the thumbs. On the left forefinger, there's a plastic wipe to clear rain from your visor. It looks quite stubby, but I actually found it quite useful when riding in the rain. Switching to the palms, they're made from Clarino, which is a synthetic leather that feels nice and flexible to ride in. There's a reinforcement where your hands wrap around the bars, and there's also leather surrounding the plastic slider at the heel of the palm. The closure to these gloves combines a Velcro wrist strap with an elasticated drawstring for a very close seal at the top of the cuff. Then there's the pocket here where you stow away the optional batteries if you're using those. So now we can head inside the gloves. As well as that thinsulate warmth lining, there's a Hypora waterproof and breathable membrane that keeps water out but still allows perspiration vapour to get away from your skin. Inside these gloves there are actually four finger pockets, so each finger gets its own. There's always a fabric liner between the finger and the next one along, which keeps them nice and warm and comfy. So onto the bit that's probably the most interesting, the power. It's provided by what Kais call micro carbon fibre, and it delivers electrically generated heat through a thin material that I actually couldn't tell was there, other than the fact the gloves were clearly getting warmer. However you choose to power the gloves, it comes from a battery. It's either the one on your bike or the separate optional batteries. The gloves come with the connection cables to draw power from the bike battery. There's a harness that connects to the battery terminals on your bike and then a Y cable that feeds through your jacket to transfer power from the bike to the gloves. If you've got a Kais heated under jacket, you can actually cut the Y cable out completely and just plug the gloves into the jacket to provide the power. But if it's an older Kais jacket, you'll probably need a pair of adapters which cost around a fiver. Hooking up to the bike is the best way of ensuring power for long journeys, but some people don't like the idea of actually being connected to their bike in that way. The other option is to power them with separate batteries. You can buy one battery to put in your jacket pocket and then you power it using the Y cable through your jacket, but I think more people will want the smaller batteries like these that tuck into the pockets on the gloves of the cuff. They do away with the need for a cable trailing through your jacket 
and they'll also suit those people who don't want to be plugged into their bike. The downside is that you'll run out of heat on a really long journey. They do make the cuff bulkier, which means it's harder to fit under a jacket, and you've also got to be organized enough to recharge your batteries between rides. We found these batteries lasted between three and six hours, depending on the heat setting we chose for the gloves, and then it took four hours to charge them back up. And a pair of these batteries costs 79 pounds. However you choose to power the gloves, they operate in the same way. When they first get power, the light on the button briefly shows red, Pressing and holding the button switches them on and they start up in the warmest setting, which is red. You then give short presses to cycle between the settings. Orange is the middle setting and then green is the coolest. Then pressing and holding the gloves turns them off. So I tested the heat output for these gloves by connecting one to a healthy 12 volt motorcycle battery and then leaving them in my garden with a temperature probe inside the glove. After 10 minutes on the highest setting, the temperature inside the glove had gone from eight degrees up to 49 degrees Celsius. After half an hour on full power, it was up to 54 degrees, which is a pretty impressive increase. And it does make a big difference when you're riding on very cold days. But I don't want people to get carried away with what a heated glove can do. There's a limit to how much heat they can generate. And that means some people can be disappointed by the level of warmth. For me, they make intolerable cold tolerable, but they don't make it feel like a sunny ride out in the middle of summer. My hands can still feel cold in gloves like this, but it's never gonna be as cold as they would be in a pair of unheated gloves. I reviewed these around the same time as wearing a pair of Kais's G7014 fingered heated gloves, which are a bit thinner and also let you use your fingers individually. As for which ones I'd go for, I think it would depend on the type of riding I was doing. For mostly shorter journeys, I think I'd prefer the improved dexterity of the four finger gloves as I'd be taking them off and putting them on more often, which is easier when you've got all four fingers available separately. For longer journeys, I think these would probably be better as they're warmer and also I wouldn't need to put them on and take them off so much if I was doing long journeys all the time. And I'd also connect them to the bike battery, which keeps the cuffs slimmer and makes it easier to tuck them under a cuff. So let's finish up with sizing, approvals and pricing. These gloves cost £200 a pair as we record this video and that includes the cables to draw power from the bike. It's another £79 for the batteries if you want those. And as we record this in January 2022, there's actually a shortage of those so there's quite a long wait at the moment. But hopefully that will be fixed and sorted out by the time you're watching this. Approvals wise, these meet the basic level one of the CE safety standard for motorcycle gloves. There's no KP mark, which you only see on gloves that offer impact protection at the knuckles. In terms of sizing, the gloves come in sizes from triple extra small up to triple extra large. The smallest size is for people whose palms have a circumference of five inches around at the widest point, And the biggest is for riders who measure 13 inches around there. I measured my palms at nine inches around, which Kai say makes me a medium. And I found that size to be absolutely perfect for me. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Kais G301 heated motorcycle gloves. But if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.